Welcome back to the channel guys. Today's going to be a fun day. We're talking all about that bass. We want to get the most out of our system and many argue that this is the most important thing that you can do to make your system sound better and be more impactful during that movie watching experience. We're going to be game matching our subs. We're going to be aligning our subs. We're going to be using a mini DSP and Room EQ Wizard along with a calibrated microphone to tune these babies to make sure that we get that amazing sound that we're looking for. Follow along as I take you through the process. Alright guys, so the first step in this process is to gain match our subs. And the point of that is to make sure that both of your subs, or all three or all four, however many subs you have, they're all equally working as hard. You're not overdriving one sub and underdriving another. Now this can happen for several reasons, uh, but the most prominent one is room modes. So you may have a null or a peak in the location of one of your subs, and when you run your Odyssey, your Arc, your YPOW, your Dirac, it is compensating based on volume. And so it might turn up one sub because it's an annul in the room and turn down another sub to get the same SPL in that listening position. But again, now it's overdriving one of your subs and underdriving another one. And so you don't want to do that. You want both your subs reducing or working equally as hard. And so that's where gain matching comes in. These subs are very heavy. And so this is kind of a cheater way to do it. It's not going to get you the best results. The best way to go about gain matching your subs is going to be to pick a spot in your room, make sure it's not in a null, but pick a spot, any spot, put a piece of tape down on the floor right in front of where the driver is, put your microphone, um, whether that be you're using a phone app SPL meter, you're using a calibrated microphone like I have here, but put that in your listening position. And then what you want to do is play a pink noise or a tone. If you're using a ported sub, you want to make sure that that tone is above the tuning frequency of that port. You don't want that to come into play. So something around 50, 60 hertz would work for a tone. But a pink noise works pretty well, especially for a sealed sub. And you just want to notate what that SPL is when that sub is in that specific position and that microphone cannot move as you're doing this to each sub. You want to write down what the SPL is. So let's say it is 90 dB for that first sub. You want to write that down. You're going to move that sub off to the side. You're going to take your next sub. You're going to put it in that exact same position in the room. That microphone is still not been touched. It is not moved, not an inch, nothing. And we're going to play that same test tone or that same pink noise. And we're going to write down what that dB is. Now this is where we can start making some adjustments. Let's say that second sub came back at 80 dB. You want to go to that gain knob on your sub and turn it up until you reach that 90 dB. I always recommend making a little mark on uh, that gain knob so you know exactly where that needs to be. Now you know that those first two subs are outputting exactly the same. Now repeat this for however many subs you have and now you have gain matched all of those subs properly and you can move on to the next step. For me, because I don't want to lug around these 120 plus pound, I, I don't remember exactly how much they weigh, but they are beasts. They fit very tightly in this. And so I'm going to use the cheat where I'm going to put my calibrated microphone, 
approximately six inches from the cone area, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take an SPL reading. I'm gonna then move that mic over. I'm gonna use a measurement to make sure that I'm using exactly six inches again, and I'm gonna take another SPL reading. And the same thing, I'm gonna adjust that gain if I need to, to make sure that both of these subs are gain matched and that the room mode is not affecting these subs. I wanna take the room mode out of the equation. So we're gonna get started on that process now. All right, guys, so we're getting ready to get set up to run um, a tone through our system to gain match our subs. The first thing that we're gonna to want to do is go into our pre-pro, our AVR, and make sure that we turn up the crossover on those mains. When we run this tone through the system, we want to make sure that our LCR is not producing any sound. We only want the tone to be coming through the sub itself. I'm going to be running a 50 hertz tone um, using REW. My Onkyo, I can jack up that crossover to 200, so that is what I'm going to do. The next step will be to go into the Mini DSP and make sure that I am starting with a blank slate. All right, guys, so here we are. We're about to take our first measurement to gain match our subs. The first thing that I'm going to do is pull up my mini DSP and um, I'm making sure that everything I'm starting from zero should, so I should not see any EQ in there. Um, you can see the inputs uh, here as well as our outputs. I'm not using input two at all so I'm simply going to turn those off. I am going to be doing this for three subs but I want to do this for one sub at a time. So I'm gonna turn output two and output three off and just have output one on for right now. So, sorry about my computer screen there. I'm also gonna to go to my output tab and I'm gonna make sure that I don't have any PEQ running on any of those channels going to click through. You should see a nice flat line for all of those. We want to make sure nothing is going to um, be compensating or causing the tone that we're going to be running through the system um, to affect it in any way. And so now we're going to check crossovers and you can see here this is by default set up as a with a low pass, high pass filter um, at a thousand hertz, it's really designed for um, a sub and mid um, integration or a mid and high integration as the case may be. So we just want to bypass this. So we want to see a nice flat yellow line here. We're going to go over to output two crossover. We're going to bypass this as well. That was Pat crossed over at a thousand as a for a high pass filter and then finally we're going to go over to three and we're going to bypass that as well so now we have three flat responses we have um, no gain no delay in any of these we're ready to run a test tone through sub one now we're in REW. We want to go to our preferences to make sure that we've got everything set up correctly and we're ready to run that tone. On your output device, you want to make sure that you have your receiver selected. In this case, I have my TXSR803. Your input device will be the microphone that you are using um, REW automatically recognized my UMM6, so I said yes, it's already in there. I have checked to make sure that my calibration file 
has been uploaded into the system. And now it's time to check our levels. That's going to run a test sweep through the system and so that we can calibrate it to try to get the most accurate measurements. We want to make sure that we're producing enough SPL, um, but not too much. They recommend a reading somewhere between minus 30 and minus 50. I always try to split that in half, so I'm looking for minus 40 when I do my settings. And you're going to set those levels using this sweep level. So we're going to click check levels and it's going to give you some great helpful tips down here. I do recommend that you go through that and then we are going to click next and run that sweep. So as you can see um, simply checking our levels, making our adjustments through our sweep level. I had to go to minus eight to get it to that minus 40 that I was looking for. And now I'm ready to start running some tones through the system. So I'm going to go to the generator that you see here and get ready to play my first tone. It's going to be at the 50 hertz mark. I'm going to now move my microphone from my listening position, my main listening position, to in front of my first sub. I have my tone generator pulled up. It starts on noise. It defaults to noise. Simply click the far left tones, highlight, I've already typed in my 50 hertz tone that I am looking for. So I'm going to move that off to the side here. I'm also going to pull up my SPL meter. You should be able to see that there. And I'm going to play my first tone. I forgot to go to my mini DSP. Let me shrink that. And I'm just looking, I'm just measuring my right sub right now, which is on output two. So I'm turning output one and output three off. Minimize that, go back to my SPL meter and we'll click play again. So there we are. My first one is 95.9. I'm writing that down. Let's move on to the next sub. My microphone is moved over. I have measured the distance to make sure that it is the same distance away from the cone as it was on the first one. And I am ready to play my tone. Before I do that, I uh, yet again forgot to turn off output two and let's turn on output one and get ready to play that tone. As you could see on that second sub, I got a 95.6 decibel reading so I'm going to want to go into my mini DSP and I am going to go to the output side and I'm going to go to output one right up here if you can see my mouse that is where I can adjust the gain for that particular sub. 
And so what I'm going to do is just adjust that up until I get the same reading of 95.9 as I did for the first sub. I'm going to continue to make gain adjustments on sub one and then verify them by taking another reading until I have a matching DB reading. Going to go down to 0.4 here. Let's try that another time. There we go. Now our first two subs are gain matched. They're putting out exactly the same dB. Let's move on to our third sub and make adjustments to it. We're ready to take measurements on that third sub. We have the microphone set up. We have measured the distance from the cone area to make sure that that is again the same as what we had the first two. We're going to go to the input section. We're going to turn off sub 1, turn on sub 3. We're going to go back to our outputs where we can adjust the gain as we take tone measurements. So let's go back to our SPL meter and get our first reading. So we have a 95.8, so very, very close. Minimal adjustment that we need to make to this particular sub. I'm going to go up by 0.1, and that should do that, but let's verify. So a little over what we wanted. So we're going to back that back down to zero. Um, we don't have any more fine might, finite adjustment than that. I'm only a 0.1 off. So that's going to be as good as I can do. These subs are now gain matched. They are all working equally hard as the other, we're ready to move on to the next step. That's the end of part one, guys. This video is getting very long, and so I've decided to break it up into a three-part series. I hope you're enjoying the content. Stay tuned as I publish parts two and part three to complete this entire process for you. Part two is going to be phase aligning all of our subs, and beginning to dial them in, EQ them. And then part three is going to cover uh, sub to main integration and level matching all of our channels. So I hope you're enjoying the content. Please give it a thumbs up if you are. Hit that subscribe button, smash that bell notification, and continue to follow along as we upgrade this home theater.